Good afternoon, space enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. I need to go ahead and throw out a disclaimer right away to save myself from grief, even though the odds of the latest asteroid to threaten the Earth, 2024 YR4, seems to have increased lately after further examination, further analysis of its trajectory, need to be very clear that the odds are still very much in our favor. That is to say, if your interpretation of in our favor means the asteroid not heading the Earth. I personally have a very unhealthy fascination with cataclysms. For example, when a hero is trying to disarm a bomb, such as the case with this late 1980s comedy action show... Go, bomb, go. Go, bomb, go. So, yeah, shouldn't surprise much of anybody that I am talking about the possibility of this asteroid hitting us with just a little bit of excitement. However, excitement that would definitely evaporate if this actually took place. Because even though the odds of 2024 YR far actually hitting our planet are still vanishingly small, at least 49 or so to 1 at the moment, and those odds may drop off even further after further analysis of its trajectory, or the odds may go up all also, if this asteroid does indeed hit the Earth, it's not going to be a planet-killing kind of event or anything that's going to cause a significant change to the environment, to the climate, anything that's going to have worldwide ramifications. But nevertheless, if you're anywhere within about 150 to 200 kilometers of this thing when it comes down, or perhaps even a little further away if it comes down in the ocean... Well, it's likely going to be the worst day of your life. And amazingly, a NASA scientist, after researching this asteroid's trajectory and the orbit of the Earth, rotation of the Earth, etc., has somehow, and once again, I can't even begin to imagine how he came up with all of this, been able to calculate a projected damage path for the asteroid, a threat region that would be in jeopardy if this asteroid did indeed impact the Earth. And even though there's a lot of ocean on this threat path, there's a lot of heavily populated cities as well. Until recently, this asteroid was the biggest story in the news media, at least as far as dangerous asteroids are concerned. This is, at least to the best estimate that we have at our disposal right now, is Apophis, a near-Earth asteroid with a diameter the equivalent of the Empire State Building, approximately quadruple the diameter of 2024 YR4, so a much, much much more dangerous asteroid, and if this were to collide with the Earth, the consequences would be far, far worse than just quadruple the impact, whereas 2024 YR4 is likely to create an explosion between 7 and 50 megatons. Again, we have a lot of uncertainty there because we're not 100% certain as to how big this asteroid is. Apophis would likely create an explosion along the lines of four gigatons of TNT, 4,000 megatons, or the equivalent of the combined nuclear arsenals, at least the active nuclear arsenals, of both the United States and Russia. And believe it or not, we would actually be praying for this asteroid to hit land as opposed to the ocean because at least on land, the destruction would be limited to a relatively small area, whereas in the ocean, this would create worldwide tsunamis, perhaps as high as 150 meters in close proximity to the blast and maybe around 15 to 20 meters, thousands of kilometers away. And by the way, in the coming days, I'm going to be releasing a video that covers the exact 
consequences of an Apophis impact in the ocean, just in case you're interested, because in my opinion, we really can't rule out this dangerous asteroid yet, in spite of what NASA might have to say about it. But the more pressing situation is this smaller asteroid, and according to a blog post from the European Space Agency, an international team of astronomers has been granted emergency use of the James Webb Space Telescope to observe this asteroid in the coming months. And the reason they're doing this is number one, to determine just how likely it really is that this thing might collide with Earth on December 22nd, 2032, and exactly how big it is. If it's larger than 50 meters, ESA is going to recommend that we plan a mission to deflect it off course. If it's smaller than that, then it's likely that ESA will recommend a regional evacuation of whatever region this asteroid ends up striking. But again, over 50 meters means that it's going to create quite a disastrous blast. And at the top of the scale, the worst case scenario for this asteroid is it would create an explosion of 50 megatons, the rough equivalent of the Soviet Tsar Bomba, or the most powerful nuclear weapon that's ever been exploded in human history. So what is the threat path? It's very interesting that a NASA scientist actually managed to figure all of this out. By the way, his name is David Rankin, and he works at NASA's Catalina Sky Survey Project, and he revealed a so-called risk corridor for the asteroid based on the rotation of the planet and its current trajectory, and there are many, many countries in its damage path, from Venezuela, Colombia, and Ecuador, across to a large swath of Africa, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Ethiopia, Sudan, Nigeria, also South China, and southern Japan and Korea. As a matter of fact, there is an enormous city in Japan directly on the damage path, and that is Osaka. So let's go ahead and check out a worst case scenario if this object were to slam directly into the center of the city. Kaboom! The resulting blast is actually approximately 49 megatons worth of TNT and would dig a crater almost 1,600 feet deep and 1.4 miles in diameter. An estimated 17,810 people would be vaporized in the crater, but a lot more are going to get killed in the fireball. By the way, this has more energy than any nuclear weapon except perhaps for the legendary Tsar Bomba. The fireball, however, is what kills the most people by far. We're talking about an area of devastation 44 miles in diameter where trees catch on fire, clothes spontaneously bursting into flame within 8.9 miles of the impact, so 18 miles in diameter, everybody's clothes catch fire, and with those kinds of consequences, you're looking at over 2.16 million people dying instantly. An additional 2.5 million people would receive third-degree burns and most probably die in the next 24 hours or so, and another 3.8 million people would receive second-degree burns. And of course, we would also have a flaming inferno 44 miles in diameter that would rage out of control for days and probably weeks. And we're only just getting started. The people who survived the fireball would be subjected to a 234 decibel shockwave shortly thereafter. An estimated 402,000 people would be killed by this shockwave. Anyone within 4.4 miles of impact would receive lung damage. Anyone within 5.7 miles would likely have ruptured eardrums, and buildings within 9.9 .9 miles would collapse. So all buildings within a 20-mile diameter would collapse and burn fiercely. And then you have the wind. The windstorm created by this would be more powerful than anything experienced in recorded human history. 
5,598 mile per hour peak wind speed at the point of impact. As a matter of fact, wind within three miles of the impact site would be faster than the storms on Jupiter. Homes within 4.8 miles would be completely leveled. Of course, the shock wave would have done that as well. And within 8.7 miles of the impact site, it would feel like being inside an EF5 tornado. And keep in mind, the largest EF5 tornadoes are about one to one and a half miles in diameter, as opposed to 17 to 18 miles in diameter. And nearly all trees within 14 miles would be knocked down by the wind. And incidentally, just about everybody who survived the fireball and the pressure wave would probably die as a result of this windstorm. 1.748 million people would die from the windstorm. But what would happen if this fell into the ocean close offshore? If it fell into the middle of the Pacific, the damage would probably be pretty limited. But this is a tsunami simulation based on a 100 megaton nuclear blast. And this asteroid would be pretty similar, even though it's only a 50 megaton blast, it's also an object that's plunging into the ocean as opposed to nuclear explosions that don't have quite the same effect. So it'd be fairly similar. And even though we're not talking about the type of cataclysmic tsunamis that one would see in movies like Deep Impact, you are looking at tsunamis with 15 to 25 meter high waves a few hundred kilometers away from the point of impact. In other words, something very similar to the 2011 tsunami that caused the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Not a small tsunami by any stretch of the imagination, a tsunami that would very likely kill hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, depending on where it hit. Again, if it hit in the middle of the Pacific, thousands of kilometers away from any substantially sized island or populated area probably wouldn't do much at all, but just off the coast of a populated region, and yeah, things get much, much worse under those circumstances. When it comes right down to it, the best scenario we could hope for is a land impact of this asteroid in some region of the planet that is not heavily populated. And if the idea the idea is to evacuate a certain region if that is what's being threatened by the asteroid once we have a good idea as to where it's actually going to hit. Well, that can be very problematic as well because a tiny trajectory shift or a tiny atmospheric shift of the asteroid during its re-entry could cause a titanic shift in terms of its point of impact, could shift it by 50, 100, or maybe even 200 kilometers from where we think it's going to hit. Or it might swerve a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right of the damage path. In other words, about as difficult to predict as your average hurricane, making evacuation a very challenging thing to do indeed. Not impossible, but probably very, very difficult and something that you would like to carry out weeks ahead of time and not hours. But here's one thing we can say for certain. At least two asteroids are going to give our planet a very close shave in the next seven years. Apophis, the far more devastating one in 2029, and then this one in 2032. This has never happened before in recorded human history, at least as far as we know based on our understanding of near-Earth asteroids. Never have objects this large passed this close to our planet in recorded time. This is an historic moment and something we need to be ready for in case things change for the worse, which is entirely possible. These things are not 100% predictable. And the longer we procrastinate, the more likely it's going to be that the human species is going to face an unparalleled cataclysm, at least in recent history. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. I would like to thank Randall Silva and Angus McBraith, my latest Patreon supporters, 
really appreciate it. I can't run this channel without your support. And also keep in mind, anybody who wants to sign up with Patreon this month, I'm going to be adding yet another exclusive title, this one about the history of Project Blue Book. And also, please support the Transporter Room. He's been a generous sponsor of this channel this month. He sponsored not just one of my videos, but two. And the first milestone I promised to get him to was 300 subscribers. We got there easily. The next milestone is a thousand and he's at 682 right now. Only a tiny percentage of the viewers of this video signing up or just subscribing to his channel, which is free by the way, would make a big difference to him and a big difference to me as well. All the links are in the description and also at the end of this video, so please don't forget that. Thanks again for watching and as always, stay angry about space.